Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Manas Sharma and welcome back to FizzWiz. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to calculate the cohesive energy per atom for a crystal using the Ripper module of Chebamol and density functional theory. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we will be calculating the cohesive energy per atom for the silicon crystal that you can see right over here. And the formula for the cohesive energy per atom is shown over here. So as you can see, you need the energy of the bulk crystal per atom to calculate the cohesive energy per atom and then you need to subtract the energy of the isolated atom from this bulk per atom energy and then take the negative of that and in this convention a positive value of the cohesive energy per atom indicates that your crystal is stable that it will bind together it will not uh, you know rip apart it will stay together however a negative value will indicate that the crystal is not stable and it will not bind together in papers or you know um, in some other uh, articles you may see a reverse convention where they don't use this negative sign and in that case what happens is a negative value of the cohesive energy per atom indicates that the crystal is stable while a positive value indicates that it is unstable now um, we will be trying to you know reproduce this experimental value um, that I found in this really old paper that says that the cohesive energy per atom for the silicon crystal is like 4.63 electron volts but we may or may not really get this value exactly because we uh, won't be using the experimental lattice parameters so essentially I'll be downloading the uh, crystallographic as well as the atomic information for the silicon crystal from the materials project database uh, for this tutorial so let's go ahead and open this web app that is accessible at this URL that I also uh, created and go to this option that is materials project to ripper and this way uh, if you type in SI over here then it will give you a list of all the materials with this formula found in the materials project database and what we need is the this particular material that is the cubic phase of silicon and this is the only stable phase so this column shows if the material is stable as you can see over here and this is the only stable phase so we will go ahead and select this material from this drop down menu and download um, or like uh, click on it and then we will use a conventional unit cell just you know for the sake of this tutorial and here you can see that this is the conventional unit cell of the silicon crystal now you can to perform any simulation with TurboMole, you of course need the quad file. So uh, we get that over here as well as the cell uh, and you know periodicity information over here. So let's go ahead and open our terminal. Now I assume that you are familiar with basic calculations with TurboMole as well as Ripper. If you are not familiar with those, then please check out my initial tutorials. The link to the playlist is down below, or you can go to my channel. So okay, so let's just go ahead and create a directory called adsorption. Uh, sorry, my bad. We are supposed to create a directory called cohesive energy. Sorry, so the adsorption was the previous tutorial cohesive and then move into this directory and create a directory called bulk because as you can see from this formula we need to do two calculations one for the bulk crystal one for the isolated atom and then create another directory called atom. Now move into the bulk directory and create a file called called quad and go ahead and paste this uh, code file contents over here save this file sorry save this file and now let's run define so I'll quickly cruise through it so okay specify the code file um, go to the next menu don't use internal coordinates and for the basis set I will be using the def2 um, TZVP basis set for this calculation which uh, is actually really large but um, never mind now let's specify the initial gas uh, molecular charge zero yes go to the FT sub menu turn it on set the functional to be PBE um, come back turn on RI and set the uh, auxiliary basis set to be universal and exit out of define now let's go ahead and open our control file and copy this you know crystal or the cell information over here so let's go down below rij and let's paste it all over here and we will actually be using um, 
a larger K point grid because this is a small cell. So something like eight by eight by eight grid, and then go ahead and save your control file and set the number of cores for uh, your calculation. So I'll use like 32 cores and let's go ahead and run this calculation now using Ripper. Okay, so as you can see over here, this calculation is now running. And while this is running, let's go ahead and try to prepare the next calculation for the isolated atom. So here we are. So let's go ahead and create the code file. And this time um, we just need one atom. So we'll do um, code and then we will just put a single silicon atom at the origin and then end our code file, save this file and let's go ahead and run define and specify this code file and uh, you can check if it worked or not by doing this C okay it looks fine go to the next menu specify the same basis set that is really important and um, go to the next menu now now this is the most crucial part for this tutorial so please uh, listen to it carefully so whenever you are running a calculation on the isolated atoms, you have to be really careful and keep in mind the electronic configuration for this particular atom. So in the case of silicon, the electronic configuration is 3p2. That means it has two unpaired electrons in the p orbitals. So we need to make sure that our occupations or initial guess respects this fact. So when you specify the initial guess now by typing in EHT, um, you can specify yes for the first question, then the atomic charge would again be zero. But here it says, do you want do you want the default occupation assignment for atoms? And I would say that you press no or N, and then see what uh, it is uh, you know suggesting. So here it says that the uh, automatic occupation number uh, assignment established, and uh, found less than half, so whatever it found, but yeah, the multiplicity should have been three, so that is correct. And as you can see over here, there are two unpaired electrons, so that is good. So that agrees with what we expected. So now we can say, okay, yes, we accept this occupation and hit yes. And do you really want to write the natural orbitals? You can say no or whatever. And then again, we will go to the RI menu, turn it on, set the um, auxiliary base is set to be universal. Um, come back and go to the DFT sub menu, turn it on, set the functional to be PVE, go back and exit define. And now let's go ahead and run your um, isolated atom DFT calculation. Okay, so now let's see um, if our previous calculation is still running, and indeed it is. However, the calculation for the ISO. Okay, so now both the calculations are complete. Okay, so never mind. So now you can see that um, no calculation is running. So let's go ahead and uh, you know go to Wolfram and type in the formula that we have over here. So we have um, minus, and then we need the energy of the total system. That is the bulk system. So let's pick that up. And so this calculation took like three minutes. So let's go ahead and pick that up, put it over here. And remember, this was supposed to be bulk energy per atom. So divided by eight, because there are eight atoms in our bulk uh, conventional unit cell. And then let's come back and pick up the energy for the isolated atom. So that is over here. Copy this and put a minus sign because we need to subtract it and paste this energy and hit enter. Now, here we, okay, so here we get a value that is positive, so that indicates that the crystal is stable, which is good news, and this value is actually in atomic units or arteries, so let's go ahead and copy this and convert it to electron volts. So again, we will head over to my web app, go to the unit conversion utility, and um, here we will choose the input unit to be atomic units and paste in our value. And we get a value of like 4.62 electron volts per atom, which is actually in really good agreement with literature, even though the lattice constant or the lattice parameter that we used was uh, actually different. It was like 5.44 uh, 
um, angstrom or something that you can see over here I guess so it was 5.44 uh, angstrom but yeah so the value is pretty good so yeah so that is it that is how you calculate the cohesive energy per atom for the silicon crystal and uh, using the repair module of Turbomol. I hope you guys really found this tutorial useful and enjoyed it. In case you did, then do, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or doubts, leave them in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.